Joining us now to dig deeper on the threat of ransomware attacks in the United States is CNN Global Affairs Analyst Kimberly Dozier and Amit Yorin, a former National Cybersecurity Director with the Department of Homeland Security. Full disclosure, he's currently Chairman and CEO of Tenable, which helps organizations assess and reduce their cybersecurity risks. Good morning to you both. We appreciate uh, you joining us. Uh, let's get straight to this quote from FBI Director Christopher Wray to the Wall Street Journal comparing uh, the recent spate of ransomware hacks to the September 11th terrorist attacks. He says, quote, there is a shared responsibility, not just across government agencies, but across the private sector and even the average American. Amit, how do you bridge that gap between the private and public sector on this? And specifically with the last part of the quote, what can the average American, the, the folks that are watching right now, do to help? Well, I think he's absolutely right in that there are, uh, there is a role to play here for average Americans, for corporations, and for the government. The government needs to do more, and I think that's some of the action that you've seen in recent executive orders and from the Department of Justice and Homeland Security. We need to do a better job of prosecuting criminals, but also uh, through retorts and countermeasures, things like sanctions, things like attacking back, things like causing disruption, things like uh, freezing assets. The government has a lot of tools at its disposal, and it needs to create greater deterrence for cyber criminals and for nations that's, that harbor cyber criminals. The private sector, uh, corporations have, a, have probably the largest role to play here. We know that the government is not going to be able to protect us, and corporations need to act responsibly and do the things that they need to do to manage cyber risk better. So they need to better manage their systems, assess for vulnerabilities, patch their systems, test their systems, and they need to protect their users, use multi-factor strong authentication, make sure the accounts they use are protected and they don't, they don't have uh, too great an access and ability to cause disruption. And there's a role for citizens. Better protect yourself. Do the things that you would do to protect your privacy uh, and secure your own computers. And if, if we do those things, the cyber landscape will look radically different. Uh, Kimberly, I'm glad that Amit mentioned deterrence. Uh, these Russian hackers have been at this for a long time, going back to 2007 and the havoc that they wreaked on Estonia. Uh, what kind of costs can the White House, the Biden administration, impose on these hackers to deter them? Well, the difficult part is many of these hackers are in denied territory. They're inside Russia or they're in Russia-friendly countries that are not exactly going to move quickly to extradite them uh, after they get a, a DOJ complaint. Um, the scary thing is that each one of these attacks, though, shows the vulnerability not just to um, whoever carried it out, but to enemy actors like the military cyber hackers in North Korea, in China, in Iran. So as Christopher Ray was calling this possibly the next 9-11, um, you can see a situation where they don't just hit a major meat supplier, but major hospital systems, uh, power supply, all at once. So one of the things that I would also encourage um, people to do, uh, along with Amit's great cyber recommendations, is go to a place like the American Red Cross and think about disaster planning, because when some of these systems get taken offline, by these hackers in places where we really can't get to them, you've got to be prepared for possibly a few days without electricity, a few days without water. That also adds to the resilience in the country. If there's a mindset of, you know what, the Internet of Things means there's a lot of stuff that's exposed and vulnerable. It's great that we're all trying to lock things down now, but that's going to take time, so we should be prepared. Yeah, Kimberly, you just hit a lot of great points. Uh, disaster preparation, uh, health systems being hacked. In fact, just yesterday, uh, the University of Florida Health System reported a cybersecurity incident. We're still working to get more details on exactly what happened. They, however, reportedly implemented backup procedures that let them continue to serve their patients. So, Amit, why is this so difficult for so many companies that don't appear to have adequate backup procedures to keep working? I think backups are an absolute critical part of the equation, uh, and it was in the president's recommendation to corporate leadership to better protect themselves. Number one on the list was better backup. Number two, uh, assess for vulnerabilities and patch your system. So there's, the, the issue is that there's a lot of work to be done, and corporate leadership 
hasn't historically focused on cybersecurity as a fundamental part of business risk. I think the landscape today and over the last several years has radically changed. We rely on technology for critical operations, pipeline, inventory management for retailers, uh, uh, data for patients in, in healthcare systems. So when we rely on technology, we need to consider cyber risk and technology risk as an integral part of our uh, uh, business risk management practices. We need to invest more in protecting our systems, recognizing that they're critical to how we operate. Kimberly, looking back at history, uh, we saw Barack Obama tell Vladimir Putin to cut it out on cyber attacks. We saw Donald Trump grovel in front of the Russian leader. He didn't address this in a meaningful way. Uh, President Biden is set to meet with Putin in a few weeks. How would you counsel him on how he should handle that meeting? Uh, well, rhetorically, I think it's probably going to be the OK Corral. I think um, Biden is, already has the natural instincts to be tough publicly. Each one is going to be trying to land a zinger on the other one that shows to their people back home that they're strong on Moscow and Washington. Uh, the problem is Biden is going to say, cut it out, and Putin's going to say, cut what out? Show me the proof. Biden can't because many of the things that prove to them that Russia has at least given a wink and a nod to some of these programs, um, some of these hacks, uh, would reveal U.S. intelligence or allied intelligence assets. It would reveal to Moscow what we know and how we know it. So uh, the best thing that could come out of this is that each man says to the other privately, yes, we each have a cyber gun to the other one's head, so now let's talk business. A sort of um, mutual assured destruction has been reached, so now that we've proven to each other that we're tough enough, we can move on to the business of actually cooperating, not being friends, but more normal diplomacy. That could be the best outcome. Mutually assured destruction. We're talking about this as if it were a nuclear threat. And so obviously the implications when you're planning for something like this is if it were a natural disaster, they're, they're huge. Uh, we appreciate the expertise both on the diplomatic side and on the technical side. Kimberly Dozier, Amit Yorin, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.